Hello every and anyone and welcome to a very different sort of video on this channel. Um, in this video I'm just going to be teaching you how to make Pokemon layouts for your series or whatever it might be. Um, I'm not going to teach you my way of making them, I'm just going to teach you the tools to make your own so that way you're not completely lost and out in the cold like I was when I started that, you know, and that almost made me quit. So if I would have had this kind of tutorial, which I hopefully I can make and it, it's helpful to everyone else. Um, you know, that would have been great help to me when I started. So hopefully I can do that for you. Um, when you start a layout, you want to be at 19, 20, 10, 80, which is just over here. You can see that to the right here. Um, you can untitle it. You can title it if you want. We'll just go with tutorial. That's going to be probably the easiest way to do this. And you'll see that's fine. You can make it transparent if you want, or you can add a color, white, black, whatever you want. Um, we'll just leave ours transparent for the moment. You will see why. Okay, so that's that's our screen right here, the transparent background, 1920 by 1080. You can see that just down at the bottom here. It says 1920 by 1080. Now, it depends what game you're gonna be playing. Um, say you're playing Emerald, you're only gonna need one big screen because the whole, the whole game is in one screen. If you're playing any game from like Gen 4 and onwards, I think you're gonna need two screens. Um, because the top screen has your gameplay and the bottom screen has kind of your options menus and stuff like that um it's a bit different if i teach you this you're going to be able to incorporate the dual screen thing in anyway so you'll just be able to work with that i'll, I'll explain it a little bit later but we'll just go we'll start now so you're going to want to know what game you're playing so say if you're playing emerald you're going to want an emerald based background if you're playing gen 4 you're going to want a gen 4 based background and that's what i decided to base this tutorial on is gen 4. so you want to find out where so we'll just open this one here we will go to photoshop thumbnails okay so i've just saved a few things in here you can see i've actually attempted one before but the video sucked so i deleted it um so i've got a gen 4 background right here there you go, perfect, Gen 4 background. Now this isn't perfect, it's not exactly very colorful. I don't want yours to pop a bit more, but this is just a just, just an example of what you can find. Um, just go on Google, look up, you know, Gen 4 background, PNG or JPEG. It doesn't really matter as long as it fixed the whole screen. Okay, now it's time to fit your first screen and you don't want to just start deleting things straight away. You want to come over to the left here on your toolbar to the ellipse tool, or it'll probably be your rectangle tool. Okay, first step is to make a make a box for your first screen. Um, you just want to quickly do this. Hold shift while you drag and it will make it the same size. It will scale up to so 776, 776, and then 474, 474. If you just hold shift and bring it down, it will change the size for you. You see, I've just left that at 800 by 800. You probably want to make that bigger. You want to make it width a bit more, like 1100 that and you want to make this one maybe let's say 900 that probably works and we'll just move this over a little bit once again you don't have to do it the way i'm doing it you do it your own way um down here you could probably add a death counter maybe your, your twitter handle something like that i'm not going to teach you that i'll teach you just the way i've done it i haven't done any of that you can add that in later that's pretty simple i'll probably go over the death counter later as well so some people will do this as a black screen and put their game over the top of the black square. I cut it out and make the background transparent, but I'm gonna teach you how to do that later. You just wanna keep these squares where you've got them placed so that way you can move things around and edit them and know where things are going to be before you make a decision and hate your decision and then have to go back and do everything again. So just keep the squares and be happy with the squares and then we'll sort them out later. Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to do your Pokemon team on this right here. You can make this as big as you want, as small as you need, as whatever fits your layout. I'm going to teach you a couple ways to do them. There's multiple ways you can do them. It's up to you completely. So I'm going to go down. You make your rectangle. You come up onto the top left and you select your move tool. This is just how I select things. It just makes it easier. And you click this. You'll see that it highlights down the bottom here, rectangle two. You now want to right click, you want to go to blending options all the way at the top. You want to go to stroke and it's up to you if you want to do this on the inside or the outside. I like to do mine on the inside. I think it just looks neater. You can make it five, you can make it 10. You can see that it changes it. I like five, five, well that was 19 actually. 
that was 19 again. Five. I like five. I'll just leave it at five. Okay, that's fine. Now, there's something you need to do with these layers before you can mess around with them. So we're going to go down to rectangle two. We're going to right click again. I'm going to come up to somewhere just above the middle. And we're going to hit rasterize layer. I don't know what this does, but if you don't do this, you cannot touch or move or color or anything. You can't do anything to these squares. So just rasterize layer. And that's all you have to do. Now you want to go to, let's say on your layer, you end up running into a scyther. Okay. Let's just say you run into a scyther. Um, you want to come down here. You want to just download the Pokemon PNGs like I have here. Pokemon PNGs. See, there's a bunch of them. That, that's how many how many I've got. Um, I'm going to type in Scyther here. You also see my Pokemon Insurgents. Let's play Delta Scyther. But let's just say you run into a Scyther. Okay, so Scyther is really big. He doesn't fit in that box. Why doesn't he fit in that box? Come on, get in there. This is what you've got to do. So you're going to shift, drag this guy down and it will scale down with you as much as you need it and now you're going to move scyther into this little square like that okay just like the rectangle too you want to right click you want to rasterize layer so you can edit this guy rasterize okay top left marquee rectangular tool rectangular marquee tool okay click that now you want to Control plus, and you want to make sure you zoom right in because this will help you so much. Just keep zooming until you finally see what you're after. And one more, and we'll be there. See this grid work. I'm going to come up to this top left corner, top right corner, bottom left, bottom right, whatever you want. This isn't important. The important part is this. And you see that that dotted line is perfectly in line with your vertical and horizontal black line. You want to come down until you reach your opposite corner and you let go and it is now selected the whole inside of that black line that black square okay now you want to right click we're still having the rectangular marquee tool selected you want to right click inside and you want to select inverse Doing that has now selected everything outside of that square, that pink purpley square. Now you wanna hit delete on your keyboard and you'll see what happens. It's now deleted everything outside that square. We control minus and minus and minus and minus and your beautiful little green boy is fit perfectly inside that square. That is one way to do it. I'll show you another way to do it. I'll just quickly cut and I'll come back with a, an example okay the second way I'm going to show you is you don't have to do the squares at all you can do pokeballs you can make them as big and small as you want it depends on how much room you've got um, we don't have a lot of room because I'm doing a few different things so I'm just making mine a little bit smaller but you know what let's just do it let's just control T that brings up this little transform once again shift drag and we'll make it just the same size as the scyther about the same size there we go and you see that beautiful pink line that shows you that you're in the middle of that square awesome love that okay on the right here you can see that it's pokeball clip art high resolution six okay it's just it's a terrible name but it's just pokeball that's what i look up right click go up to blending options and you can add a outer glow if you want a drop shadow drop shadow is probably the best one just click that and you can the size let's just go with like 10 and the distance will be 10 and the spread will be 10. it's not a big difference but it just adds a little bit of depth now this is another way you can do it it's completely up to you if you don't want to spend all that time oh, i want to go to pokemon pngs like i had before let's just scroll until we find something okay we found a ponyta see that ponyta is really big once again a shift drag and you can have it so that Ponyta fits just inside the circle or just above it. That's up to you. That's another way to do them. And another way to do them is another way that I'll show you when I come back. Okay, so I'm a big fan of Pokemon Insurgents. I love their game. I think it's very well made. I think it's very good. The best thing about Pokemon Insurgents is that they give you all the files, graphic files and the battle backs. 
and there's all these little these little stands, these little bases, the little the little battlefield kind of deals. I'm just gonna grab this one here, the enemy base city, and I'm gonna drag it into our layout here. And what you can do, just so this isn't so harsh, is you can come down to the bottom right here, go to opacity, as you can see here. I'm gonna zoom in for you so that it's easier. 80%. You can see how it's still to just faded a little bit. It's good, it's great. And once again, we can probably just shift drag this a little bit, make that a little bit bigger. And we can come down into our Pokemon PNGs and let's let's go with Skarmory. I like Skarmory. Shift drag and place a Skarmory right there. You can do, that's how you can do your team. You can do six of these laid out. You can do six squares. I like the squares. I think it looks neat and it just kind of, it looks kind of cool that they're all cut off and they perfectly fit in a box. It's like chaos in a small small space. I like it. I did this for Pokemon Insurgents. I have got this planned for another series later on that I, I've got. I just think it's kind of open, it's free, it's, it's good. Um, either one of these works. Absolutely any one of these. And you'll probably come up with your own way later on as well. And always remember, come down to Skarmory here in your layers or Ponyta in your layers, right click and rasterize a layer so you can mess with this thing. You'll try to mess with it later and be like, why isn't it working? Why can't I do anything? It'll tell you that it'll give you some warning like this right here. Ready? I'll show you. Skarmory, I'll click on Skarmory here. Go to the marquee tool, I'll place over it. I'll hit delete. Could not complete your request because the smart object is not directly editable. That to someone like me who's never done this before is gibberish. It just means it, just rasterize it. That's all you gotta do. Rasterize the layer, right click on him, rasterize the layer and delete. And now it's editable. Once again, don't know what that means, but it works. The next step in making your layout is depending on what game you're playing, you're gonna need a whole different set of gym badges to uh, show where you are in the game. Say you're at the fourth gym, you've probably got the third gym badge unlocked. So you wanna show that and show that you've got five more to go. So I'm going to quickly put this in the game and then I'll explain how I did it. Okay, I'm back. I have put two of these gym badges in. You can see that they are perfectly in place where I want them. Um, I'll show you how I got them there and how I'm editing them and all that so you can see what to do. Okay, so we've got down here, you can see coal badge one, which is this fella here. The forest badge two, which is down here. And that is this one here. And the cobble badge is number three. So you wanna hit control T and you can shift move them around and try to get them to what you want which mine is 90 by 90 and you can see that that's kind of a pain you can't quite get it right until you get lucky so what you want to do is come down to cobble badge three rasterize the layer that's always important you want to click on this boy and you want to come over here and you want to make the width 90 and the height 90 i've made the others 90 and 90 so they're nice and square nice and scaled the right way and you'll see that photoshop does this lovely thing for you where it told you that that's perfectly lined up and it's going to try and space them perfectly for you oh there you see it 21 pixels and 21 pixels between each each little image there you let go you do that you just bring it in do it again for the next five and it's done so if you're starting your pokemon layout you obviously haven't got any gym so you want these to be colored out and then when you finally get past that gym you'll you'll come back into photoshop and you'll give it its color back and it'll it'll signify that you've been in that gym so you just want to click on this come down to the bottom right here right click blending options and you want to come to color overlay which is right here like that you can see that it's gone to a blue color let's just make it black okay or even even just a touch of gray there it's not so harsh. There we go. That's all you're going to do, really. And you can come in and make a stroke. Uh, go on the outside this time, because uh, if you've got the stroke on the inside, it'll cut off some of the gym badge and it'll look a bit funny. So you just want to make that a little bit smaller too. So you'll go to two pixels and done. And you'll do that for the rest of them also. You'll see that I've added my uh, Twitter handle in to here. You can add a little Twitter um, PNG just here, just to signify that it is Twitter that you're probably supposed to go and look at because here this could be instagram or whatever but that's just to signify that um this is a death counter this is just a little skull cartoon png that i found 
put that there and I added a zero here because it's the start of a Nuzlocke, start of a hardcore Nuzlocke, start of whatever, and you're going to be starting on zero. If you started at one, well then you're doing something wrong, but you just come to blending options, right click, just add a stroke to the outside of that number, maybe even make it a little bit bigger just so it pops a little bit. There you go, number five, and you can even do that to the skull also. Perfect. Just in case you're doing a game with Gen 4, you want to make this bottom screen that would be, you know, just your menu options and the Pokemon on your team. You just add it as a smaller screen. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't show a whole lot of uh, entertaining content. You know, it's, it's quite boring. It's just, it's just a smaller screen. It doesn't show anything, but you just want to have that be smaller so people can see what you're doing. It's not just dead air or dead screen. It's just showing a blank screen and nothing. That's all you want to do. It's just a smaller screen. This is last but not least. You, some people will make this a black screen and they will put their game over this black screen. But sometimes that doesn't work depending on what game you're playing. You want to right click on the rectangle one and rasterize. And I'm just doing this for myself just so you, I can show you. You don't have to do this. But let's say you make that black. People make this black and then they put their game over it. And sometimes it doesn't fit. Sometimes you got black bars and it looks a bit ugly and it looks all stretched out and gross. So we don't want to, we want to do that. What you want to do is you want to click on your background. Okay. You want to rasterize layer. Okay. That's good. That's what we want. Now you come up to the top left, the regular rectangular marquee tool, and you want to come into the top corner and you want to shift, not shift, sorry, zoom. You want to zoom. One more, one more, one more, until you get the grid. It's going to show up. Please show up. There we go. And now you with the marquee tool, top left corner. It's it's usually pretty generous with where you're putting it. Oh, no, didn't do it. Didn't do it. Come on, buddy. There we go. And you want to drag this to your opposite corner. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Taking its time, and there we go. Now, because you've got your background selected, it's not gonna delete the rectangle. This is just a border. This is just a, a stencil that we can copy and it gets at the right size. You don't have to guess. Delete. Doesn't look like anything's changed, right? Well, select your rectangle. And okay, this is also something that happens. This dotted line, for some reason, as soon as that is in, in your Photoshop, it won't let you do anything else. So just click outside of it with the marquee tool. Click on your rectangle that you copied and hit delete you'll see that it's transparent on the background. This is what you want so you can stick your gameplay behind it and put your Pokemon layer above it so you can stretch and move and crop and whatever, whatever you want. It's just easier. It's better, it's easier, it works. Now you might think that this is a little bit ugly. It's just kind of fades into nothing and it doesn't quite work. So you want to come down to tutorial. You want to right click, blending options, stroke, you can have it be black, you can have it be white, you can even add a gradient with whatever you want, black and white, say you're playing black and white, say you're playing diamond and pearl, you want to make that uh, pink and like a light blue, just go pinkish color, and you want to come down to this bottom right one here, select the color, and a nice light blue, okay, and you make this one 10, because it's a bit bigger, and there you go, you've got a nice little border there. That is completely up to you, whatever you want to do with that. If you think that looks better or the other one look better, that's up to you. This is just an example. And if you want to cut out a little hole for your bottom screen, you would do the exact same method that we did to cut out this top screen right here in your bottom screen, tracing your square. I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful. Um, just have fun with it. Take your time. It takes a while. It'll take me like three hours to make one perfect and get everything right. You'll learn little tips and tricks. This is just to get you started. Just something to start. It's a, it's a foundation to grow. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching. Leave a like if it did help you. Let someone else know if they're trying to, trying to learn and they don't know what they're doing to come watch this video. Thank you.